In this video, I'm telling you everything you need to know about ruptured eardrums. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. The tympanic membrane, otherwise known as the eardrum, is a very thin structure that forms an airtight seal to separate the outer ear canal from the middle ear space. As the vibration of sound travels down the ear canal, the eardrum's job is to vibrate, transferring the mechanical vibration of sound through the middle ear bones into the cochlea, which is where sound can be converted into a nerve impulse and sent up to the brain. The eardrum itself is composed of three very thin layers of tissue. You have the outer cutaneous layer, you have the middle fibrous layer, and you have the outer mucosal layer. All three of these layers combine to be only about 0.1 millimeters in thickness, which is about the thickness as a single strand of human hair. Which leads us to a quite obvious problem, which is the eardrum is extremely easy to damage. And when this damage does occur, it can cause an immense amount of pain, leave you with a conductive hearing loss, and could possibly require surgery to treat. Now, rupturing the eardrum, creating a perforation or a hole like you see here, is most often unintentional and can occur as a result of significant fluid buildup in the middle ear space, significant changes in barometric pressure, acoustic trauma, foreign objects, or a severe head trauma. Let's run down the list starting with fluid buildup in the middle ear. When most people think about fluid in the ear, they often think of the water that gets into their ear canal after showering or after swimming. But this is not the type of fluid that I'm talking about. I'm talking about fluid that actually builds up behind the eardrum in the middle ear space. If there is significant fluid buildup behind your eardrum in that middle ear space, like someone would experience perhaps with otitis media, which is a middle ear infection, if you get enough fluid buildup behind there, it could actually cause your eardrum to burst, much like poking a needle into a balloon. Extreme changes in air pressure can also cause your eardrum to rupture. We all have what is called a eustachian tube, and that eustachian tube connects our throat to the middle ear space that I just got done talking about. Now, the job of the eustachian tube is to regulate the pressure inside of the middle ear to make sure that it is equal to the ambient air pressure outside of your ear. You may notice this regulation when you feel your ears pop when flying in an airplane. That is your eustachian tube allowing air in and out of that middle ear space. However, if you have sinus congestion or your eustachian tube is not opening and closing like it normally should, you could build up a significant amount of pressure that can cause that eardrum to rupture. If for whatever reason you do have issues regulating your own middle ear pressure, make sure that you check out my video, Five Ways to Unclog Your Ears, that I will link in the description. Loud sound can also cause a ruptured eardrum, like if you're exposed to an explosion or a really loud gunshot. You see, sound is typically measured in sound pressure level. This means that sound actually creates a pressure change. And when you have an extreme pressure change like you would experience with an explosion or a really loud gunshot, it can actually create so much pressure that it ruptures your eardrum. Okay, let's talk about foreign objects. Now, I know a cotton swab might not necessarily be a foreign object to you, but it is absolutely a foreign object to your ear canal. And when you take one of these guys and stick it inside of your ear canal, not only are you pushing wax further inside of your ear, you also run the risk of rupturing your eardrum, causing extreme pain and potentially dislodging the three middle ear bones. I've said it a million times, keep cotton swabs, bobby pins, car keys, or anything smaller than your elbow outside of your ear canals. Otherwise, you could have a really expensive date with a surgeon in your future. Now, if you've had severe head trauma, like being in a motor vehicle accident, that can also cause a rupture of your eardrum. And not only that, but it can also cause structural damage of those three middle ear bones and even your cochlea, which can dramatically impact how well you can hear. Now, there are occasions where a ruptured eardrum is intentional, and this is when an ear, nose, and throat physician actually creates a perforation inside of your eardrum in order to drain fluid outside of your middle ear space and then put a pressure equalization tube in place. And this often occurs occurs mostly with children, but then you also have trans tympanic injections, which are really designed for individuals who have a sudden hearing loss in one ear. They actually go in and perforate the eardrum to inject a steroid into the middle ear space. 
So outside of these reasons, how does someone actually tell if they have a perforated eardrum? Well, first and foremost, you should be experiencing a lot of pain. Other than that, you can actually have a little bit of drainage coming out of your ear canals because of some fluid that is leaking through that perforation. And you also may experience hearing loss and tinnitus. A rupture is most easily identified by a comprehensive hearing evaluation combined with visualization of the eardrum itself, as well as tympanometry, which tells us the mobility of the eardrum and the ear canal volume. Treatment for a ruptured eardrum can be as simple as waiting to see if the perforation heals itself over the course of several weeks. Another option if you have a small perforation is called a moringoplasty, which is where they actually patch the hole with a gel-like substance or a paper-like tissue. If you have a larger, more serious perforation, you may require a tympanoplasty, which is where a surgeon will remove a portion of a vein or the outer sheath of a muscle, make an incision behind your ear, pull that ear forward to get behind the eardrum, and perform a graft of that material on the back side of your eardrum. If damage was caused to your three middle ear bones, then you may also have to go through an ossiculoplasty, which is basically where they restructure those three middle ear bones, or they completely replace them with a prosthetic. Ultimately, a ruptured eardrum is no laughing matter. Sometimes you can prevent them, and sometimes you can't. Just remember, if you feel like you may have a ruptured eardrum, the best thing that you can possibly do is go see an audiologist to get your ears tested. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.